coming up today on the Nice Guys on Business. I liken it to this. You're driving your business at 60 miles an hour at night with no headlights. Eventually, you're going to hit something that's going to hit it hard and it's going to hurt. Don't drive angry. Well, it's hard not to when you're listening to the Nice Guys on Business. Need an education on how to grow your business? The Nice Guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Today's guest is so nice that he could be my mom's advisor. As a matter of fact, he is my mom's advisor. Well, Rich Patotsky, he is over 25 years of experience as a financial executive. Uh, he's also a fractional CFO. He lives, eats, sleeps, and breathes the financial world, especially in industries including construction, logistics, professional services, and most recently, of course, cryptocurrency. That is a, that's a good one to be a part of now. With M&A experience, mergers and, mergers and acquisitions experience, remind me, Rich, by the way, to, uh, to introduce you to a guy. His name is Dominic Rinaldi from another show, M&A Unplugged. Both from the buyer's and the seller's perspective, he's, he's, got, he's got the links and he's a good guy. This will be a good talk because Nice Guy Community, as you know from uh, listening to me for the last several years, uh, anytime that I hear anything financial, all I hear is Charlie Brown's teacher, want, want, wanting. But I am going to focus today. I'm going to learn a lot today and hopefully you guys will learn as well when we talk finance. Welcome, Rich, to the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Thanks for having me, Doug. Excited to be here. So I, I have to honestly say this is the first time I think I've ever gotten a lead from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a wonderful lady and I'm happy I can help her. So that's a beautiful thing. So you've been doing her books and her advising for uh, for many, many years. And uh, was it your dad that was working with her beforehand or who was working with her before? Do you remember? Uh, so uh, I had acquired a practice and uh, your mom was one of the clients that I acquired back uh, in 1997. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you have been working with her for uh, 20, almost uh, 22 years. Is that right? Did I do my math, Did I do my math right? So, uh, and she loves you. And when I heard that you uh, were making a move at some point in the, in the past down to Florida and you had a, uh, a business that you were really promoting and working hard, I said, what better space to do that in the new media space? So Tell me, I got to start with really a simple 101. What is a fractional CFO? And I'm assuming CFO is chief financial officer? Correct. Right. So a fractional CFO is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, so small and middle market companies that are going through a significant growth probably have, uh, they, they outgrow their, their current team or they're looking to bring on a full-time CFO, but they're just not there yet. They can't afford the salary and the uh, tag along benefits. So a fractional CFO provides a cost savings. It can provide an immediacy if you're dealing with a cash crisis or something like that. It gives you flexibility and it gives you experience in your industry you may not otherwise have. So it's interesting because I really never, you know, you always think when you think about running an organization and I'm sure, you know, you're a CFO hammer, so everything looks like a CFO nail to you. But as a guy that is in, you know, sales and relationships for and founded a, a, a turnkey podcast production, or, you know, podcast production company, I always thought that the important things are the the outbound facing stuff like marketing, sales. And the more I'm talking to people, the more I'm realizing the importance of having something that actually knows how the books run and can run the books properly because you do all the advising to the organization as the money's coming in. So maybe share just a little bit about why, why CFO as opposed to, let's say, why not marketing or why not sales or why not operations help and, and everything that is coordinated with that stuff. So it's interesting. So a true CFO is, is as much involved in operations as he is in the finance side. Uh, and he has internal and external facing clients, right? So he will have the CEO as, as his main client, and he's there to educate and mentor and, and share information. Um, and then he also has the other divisions and departments in the company. So if you think about sales, okay, if you have product A and product B, do I know which one's making more money and how do I get the reporting to line up with that? So I'm making good decisions on a daily basis. Um, you know, that's part of it. The other part of it is, you know, as a CFO, one of the things you're responsible for is, is managing resources. And, and you have to make decisions on a daily basis as to what's the best way to optimize those resources. We all have limited resources and we have to make good decisions. When do you think is a good time? Is it a dollar amount? Is it a responsibility uh, uh, aspect of, of a company? When is a good time to be starting to think about whether a, a fractional CFO or a CFO at all is something that we should have uh, as a... So there's, uh, yeah, there's two answers to that, right? The first one is usually you're having a pain point, right? Those pain points are going to be, I haven't seen my financials or my, or my monthly financials in 90 days. I can't get good numbers. I don't believe they're right. Um, you know, so you're going to need, you have a need base, right? The other part of it is I'm growing substantially 
and, and my key st- stakeholders, whether they be investors or the bank or, or if you're a construction company, but the surety line, they, they want to see the additional um, information and they want to have know that it's credible. So to, it's, a, it's an opportunity to in, improve your systems, right? So how about at a dollar perspective? Uh, if a company has reached a certain volume, a million dollars, $5 million, $20 million, I guess it just depends on the service that they're offering. Like somebody that's moving real estate would be would much have a much higher dollar volume than somebody 000. that's moving $5 widgets. <laughs> okay. So I'm sorry. So any anytime you're looking at this, the dollar size, it's probably 500000 up to $50 million in revenue are probably optimal companies that, that probably would need the services of a CFO, if not on a full-time basis, on a part-time basis. So what do you do to do an analysis when you first get a call? Or what are some of the pain points that I'm going to experience as a business owner before I even think about the idea of bringing in a, uh, a CFO? And, and again, it's probably going to be, you know, is cash tight? Are, are you frustrated with the status of your organization's finances? Do you have confidence you're tracking the right numbers? And that's one of the huge things, right? So one of the things I do for all my clients is to create a dashboard of what I call key performance indicators, KPIs. And so it's, what are you using to drive your business? Uh, you know, if, if you are flying blind, right? You hear that expression a lot. I liken it to this. You're driving your business at 60 miles an hour at night with no headlights. Eventually, you're going to hit something that's going to hit it hard and it's going to hurt. You know, so basically, one of the things I try to do is to make sure we have good metrics for the company and we know that the numbers behind them are good so we can make decent decisions. When do you realize that you're getting into a, uh, a pain point? Uh, is, it, is it something as simple as, hey, I don't know what my financials are? I mean, uh, uh, if you're running a company, I'm assuming that to a degree, you're having, you have to keep track of financials anyway. You're keeping track of sales coming in and dollars going out. Aside from that, again, here's where Charlie Brown's teacher takes over with the wah, wah, wah. What else is it that I need to know so I'm assured that I'm going to have a business that's going to succeed? Well, Doug, you know, it's interesting. You'd be surprised how many businesses out there were – you know, the guy's a napkin maker. He's been making napkins for 40 years and he knows everything about the process. What he doesn't know is if there's a better way to leverage his supplier or if there's a better way to, to put his money to use, right? So, you know, he's been doing it for so long, he gets in a rut and, and he works in his business, not on his business. Mm, One of the yeah. things you get from me is an outside perspective that says, hey, you've got some other revenue stream potentials or other opportunities here to, to, to increase your bottom line. I think it's it's really cool to think about from a financial perspective. I guess I looked at it as as thinking, geez, to to be a part of the dollars and cents. I mean, I'm just I really am just looking at, at from a sales perspective, looking at the dollars coming in the door, and apparently it goes much much deeper than uh, than that. So why don't you talk about some of the other ways that you get involved in an organization? It, it really, as you mentioned, something pretty pretty interesting. The way that we handle. Um, you know, money coming in the door or the way that we're handling vendors that we are hiring? What is it that you do with those, with those guys? So, you know, I do a top-down approach. I, I'll do a, a, a supply chain review and, and, and vet the vendors. Um, if you haven't bid, bid your, uh, your, your cost basis for, the, uh, for your suppliers in a while, we kind of go out and see if there's another, another fish in the sea. Uh, also, other things I do that help the, the businesses to get it ready for, you know, a potential exit. So if, if you've got an owner and, and all of us are getting up to that age where we're potentially thinking about what's the exit strategy, uh, we try to maximize the enterprise value of the company, right? So how do you do that? You look at w- what expenses can be controlled. You look at how to increase the bottom line. Uh, if you're going to get a multiple in your company, you, you certainly want to get the, the most you can. And you also want to get it on every dollar that you should be getting it on. So we do a complete review of the financial statement looking for personal expenses and things that might be excluded uh, that would increase your, your payout on, on a multiple. How do you know when it's time to step into an organization and when it's time to, to back up a little bit? For example, if you have an organization that's doing, let's say, a million dollars a year in business and they're trying to figure out, okay, well, how much time do I need to bring in a fractional CFO into my organization? And typically, what would that, how do we determine what the cost would be as a, you know, as a, as a line item on my, on my budget? Great question. So, so the first thing is it can be anything from a half a day a month to two days a week, depending on your need. And that would be something that we would uh, jointly discover and talk about. Another thing that I provide is, is mentoring to the existing team, right? The ideal thing would be if we can coach up your existing players and put some systems in place, then I'm not there for it. For the duration is limited, right? That the, the engagement is limited to, to getting to a, to a point where you can do, be self-sufficient again or go out and hire a full-time CFO. That's what we need if you've grown to that point. 
mm-hmm. uh, from a cost basis, you know, and it's going to range. Uh, and it, it could be as, you know, as little as, as, you know, depending on the hourly rate, a couple hundred dollars per hour, or it's going to be, you know, $1,500 a day, depending on what you need again. Right, right. I got it. I got it. And how is your position different than, let's say, a um, an accountant or somebody that comes in and examines and does an analysis of your books, or even than a bookkeeper that is keeping track of everything that's going on? Do those folks report to you, or is that a role that your team, you and your team, play? Uh, typically, it's complementary, right? So, whatever your outside CPA is doing, uh, typically for year end review work and or tax return. Uh, we may be able to save you some money there because we'll be getting your books much cleaner and there'll be less for them to do. Therefore, that, that, that annual fee should come down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the bookkeeper, we are an add-on. A bookkeeper, if they're keeping good books, helps, obviously. And then that ha- leads us directly into the metrics phase where we take the numbers and then we interpret them to figure out what's exactly going on with the business. Hmm. So tell me a little bit about the M&A side of it. Uh, so it sounds like you have some experience with M&A and how does that fit into the role of a fractional CFO? So we are the person that's going to try to maximize your enterprise value. So it's a question of taking a look, putting the systems in place. Uh, you know, in an M&A transaction, they, they pay for process, they pay for repetitive revenue and they pay for cash flow. So, you know, we kind of are tied to all three of those as far as trying to get you in the best position to get the most value for your enterprise. What do people hope to achieve on the other side of your services? Is this an ongoing relationship? Is this a temporary position until somebody feels like they're at a revenue uh, model where they could bring in a a full-time CFO or are some organizations never meant to have a full-time CFO? Yeah, that's a great question. Some are never meant to have a CFO. If you're growing substantially, uh, we're there to get you through your, your, your growth phase. Uh, and, and typically it's going to be, okay, I have an immediate need. If I have to go out and make the hire right now, it could take me six months to find the right guy or person. Um, you know, and so we're kind of there to fill that gap and help you with that search process if that's what you want. Uh, if you are experiencing a pain point, we can do it on a project basis and get you through your pain. Um, you know, and then we, then we become an ongoing resource, right? You, you may not need us consistently. You may need us less, which is fine. But you also know that you have that resource that, that if you have issues, you can, you can pick up the phone and make a phone call. Just curious, what's your, what's your opinion about an organization that's in a growing phase? And I'm not talking about a huge organization. I, I mean, I'll, I can use my, my company as an example. If we're doing under a million dollars in business, but we're thinking about trying to get to a point where we're scaling and we need to bring in some important players in the game to do things like um, uh, maybe even some code for some uh, computer development that we have, or maybe just some production help. Uh, do you work with advice as to whether somebody should bring in uh, capital through venture capital or is that something that's outside of your scope? hundred percent. We do that. You know, one of the great things we can do is the financial modeling that gives you your what if analysis. It, it lays out, what does it look like? How much cash do I need to do? To, you know, let's talk about headcount. Let's talk about, you know, hardware and, 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 you know, what resources are needed and what does that look like to my balance sheet? What does it look like to my line of credit? Do I have enough cash even to be able to do that? Or, if I'm going to go raise capital, how much do I need? And what and what does the burn rate look like on the other side of that? So as somebody that is based out of Miami, is all of your work virtual? Do you do it face-to-face? What's the what's the best way for you to get started if you have a client that's interested in, in taking advantage of your services? I can do it. Obviously, virtually is the most cost-effective, but I'm happy to jump on a plane and go wherever. I'm close to two major airports down here. And uh, I have clients all over the country right now. So Nice Guy Community, uh, Rich's website is miami-cfo.com, and we'll make sure we put a uh, a link in the show notes. Um, Rich, I'm really curious about just just how somebody realizes the importance. Again, we talked pain points earlier, but what if they don't, somebody's not feeling the pain, but needs to understand the importance of bringing in an outside uh, CFO such as yourself, even if it's just for a temporary basis and in a very, very um, small but complimentary role? So, you know, let's talk about it like a seasonal business. I mean, you're, you have a certain fixed amount of time to, to maximize your profit during that, those, those months when you're going. Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to get out ahead of it, right? I, I tell the joke on my tax planning side where it says, okay, if you call me in November, I can do tax planning. If you call me in January, I'm doing tax preparation. You want to be proactive with this, right? You want to get out ahead of it and you want to make sure that your policies and procedures and your systems are designed correctly so that you have less headache. I mean, it's all about freeing up the owner to do what they're supposed to be doing, which is, you know, out there being the, you know, working in the business, not on it, right? They they shouldn't be spending their time 
in the weeds. They should be trying out there, you know, doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So hopefully if we create the systems, we allow them the freedom to do what they're supposed to be doing. You know, it's interesting as a, as a guy that started a podcast to promote my book and then started a podcast production business because we had some success in the podcast game. It, it's amazing how quickly nice guy community and just to put yourself in this, in this position, how quickly your business grows to a point where um, you don't even understand some of the things that you don't understand. I mean, Strick and I and Strick Rich, just so you know, he's my business partner too in the production business. We both have our sphere or, or, or our, our zone of genius and my zone of genius, I guess I would put it into the relationship building and selling side. His zone of genius is in the, uh, is in the systems and backend management of the entire production, but neither of us has any type of financial experience. So it would seem like if from our perspective, it would be the perfect fit. You know, we're, we're small enough that we can't bring in somebody full time, but we're big enough to know that we don't have the capacity to do the stuff. And I'd be really curious, like where you even start with a company like ours. We, while we do our taxes and we have a, a bookkeeping system that we have in place, we get no advice from anybody from a financial perspective. So with a company like ours, for example, where would you even start? That's easy. So it's a, it's, it'd be a mentoring and coaching on you and Strick, and it would be uh, benchmarking. So we'd, we'd find other companies out there that have relevant data and, and assume, you know, who has the best practices and, and what do their financials look like? And then we, then you have a measuring stick and you start saying, okay, how do I get my numbers to look like theirs? Right? So you, you find a benchmark and you start, you start, you know, you need a target, you need a goal, and then you start working towards it. Okay, how do I get there? It's interesting. I, I'm I'm curious how involved again. I know that I know that your your uh, tentacles go well be, beyond just the financial side and into the advice and mentorship side. I wonder how much of what you do has impact, whether it's on our business or anybody that's bringing you in. How much do you have impact on the selling part of the system, on the c- customer service side of the equation? Just saying to a, a client, "Hey, w- we need to get our our CFO involved." Oftentimes, that that gives you a lot of um, uh, a lot more credibility to be able to say you even have a team member that is that is in that position. Do you find that to be true with your clients? Hundred percent, right? So that's that's absolutely gives them instant credibility, and, and more importantly, when you bring up that sales cycle, you know, if you've got product A and product B, in your case, the podcast or or the production side of it, you know, there are different gross margins and different profitability on each of those. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you decide where you're going to focus your energy, product A or product B? And do you have the reporting? In other words, do you have a, a profit and loss statement that, that literally isolates out all of the costs associated with each of those functions to be able to make that decision? Yeah. You know, so if you've got widget A and widget B, which one's making you more money? And, and you know, why are you focusing on widget A if widget B makes you five times as much money? Right? And that's part of that decision-making process. But to your, to your point, in the sales cycle, anytime you're in a negotiation over price or, or service, it always helps to have a numbers guy in the room, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that numbers guy could be significant. Again, nice guy community. How important is that to you as well to grow your business? If, you're, if your zone of genius is not in the numbers, then it makes sense to bring in somebody to be able to do that. And when we're talking about bringing in a fractional CFO, uh, you don't have the risk of putting somebody on salary. You have the opportunity to bring in somebody just for a couple of hours or a couple of days or beyond. Uh, every month. And hey, what's the worst case scenario? You bring him in and he actually finds himself in a position where now you have to make a decision. Do you want to bring in, do you want to bring in Rich full-time because your, your company is now killing it based upon a lot of the information that he has at his fingertips? Knowledge is power. And just to, to be ignorant of the numbers, while I feel like sometimes that's best for me not to know because I don't, because I can't do anything about it. It's not that I can't do anything about it, but I won't do anything about it. It's much easier to bring in somebody to be able to uh, help you and make the investment. So, uh, Rich, man, I, I appreciate you uh, you being on the show. And again, Miami-CFO.com. Any, uh, any wise words of wisdom that we can impart if somebody was interested in, in taking action on anything that you said today or moving forward in any way, whether they hire you or not, any words of wisdom that you can offer to somebody in my uh, community that's got a growing or starting a business right now? Well, first of all, you know, I'm happy to talk to anybody, but I'm, you know, certainly do your homework and, and, and try to find you know, it's always better to not have to recreate the wheel, right? Unless you have a better mousetrap, it's always better to see if there's people in your industry, how they're handling it. And, 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 you know, like I said, always happy to talk to people and, and come up with, you know, problem solving solutions that work for everybody. Great. 
Great. And again, nice guy community. We'll put a link for miami-cfo.com directly in the, uh, in the show notes. So you don't have to worry about how to spell it. Sounds pretty easy, but you never know. You <laughs> could screw that up pretty easily. <laughs> so Rich, man, I appreciate you being on the show and thank you for all the work and, and kindness that you have imparted about <clears throat> my mom over the last two decades. Doug, thanks so much for having me. Really enjoyed it. Nice guy community. Never underestimate the power of nice against special thanks to Rich Patotsky. All of his information will be in the show notes. Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out of here. For the nice guys on business, I'm Steve O'Brien. Seriously, it'll only hurt for a minute. And don't worry, I'll be fine.